It's the late 2000s, and the internet is still in an era of forms, message boards, and the like. During this time, user-created horror stories began to spring up like wildfire across every corner of the web. These stories would be known as creepypastas. Hello people, I'm Tommy, and today we're going to take a look at video game creepypastas from the days of yore and see just how entertaining, scary, or just downright stupid they are one decade later. Now, I love unregulated internet access as much as the next guy, and creepy internet stories definitely left an impression. Some as scary as the Smile Dog, or others as famous as the Slender Man, and even the worst creepypasta ever made, Jeff the Killer. But today, we're gonna keep it simple and only talk about video game related stories. And before we get into it, I must clarify there is a difference between video game creepypastas and creepypasta video games. We'll just be talking about the stories today, so stuff like Slenderman the 8 Pages and Sonic.exe I will be saving for another day. But without further ado, Ben Drowned. Quite possibly the most famous video game related creepypasta. Now the oversimplified version of the story goes that our writer here has acquired a copy of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, and over time the game becomes more and more corrupted because of a haunted spirit. Which, as a side note, is a very common trope with stories like this. We learn the original owner, Ben, was sacrificed to a cult called the Moon Children, and now his soul is trapped inside the Majora's Mask cartridge. Now, the story does expand from there. In fact, there was like a 10-year gap in between the second and third arc. But to me, what makes this creepypasta so special, as probably why it was so popular back in the day, was because it is one of the only creepypastas of its era to have footage. Yes, the writer not only wrote a story, but even included actual gameplay of the supposed haunted cartridge. Just that freaked people out, and this convinced many 10-year-old children that this creepypasta might actually be real. I really like this one, and although the story gets a little wonky later on, I will always remember the uneasy feeling of watching that original Ben Drown video all those years ago. Also, the game being Majora's Mask, a game that already has pretty dark themes, makes this story much easier to grasp than turning a fun and happy game into a dark nightmare. Speaking of which, Pokemon Black version. Oh no, not that game. Or that one. This game. The story goes, a collector comes across a Game Boy Pokemon cartridge that was just black and just had the title Pokemon. The game opens and the player gets to pick their starter, which is the ghost that appears in Lavender Town. It couldn't be damaged, and it only knew one move called Curse, that immediately killed the Pokemon. And after the battle, you would curse your opponent, leaving only their tombstone. After doing this for the whole game, there were no trainers left. Only their tombstones remained. The game fades to black, and reappears where your trainer is now an old man who starts a fight with the ghost, only to be cursed themselves. The writer then says they lost their cartridge during a move and blah blah blah, how spooky. You can play a ROM hack based on the story, and all you do is press one button. What fun. The story is whatever, it just comes off as a guy reviewing a ROM hack, which honestly makes the story really funny if you put it in that context. Another story about Pokemon is that of Lavender Town. Now in the actual games, this place was always a bit unsettling. People talk about ghosts, there's a whole tower that has literally just a Pokemon graveyard. And then there's that ghost from the previous story. This brings us to the urban legend of Lavender Town Syndrome. In the Japanese version of Pokemon Red and Green, it's rumored that the high frequency of Lavender Town's music would cause kids and teens to commit suicide due to having more sensitive hearing. Now, I'm a fervent believer that the Lavender Town music is an absolute f***ing bop, and if it was confirmed that this music was connected to hundreds of suicides, I'd really doubt Pokemon would even exist anymore. But hey, in the sequel's Gold and Silver, Pokemon Tower got turned into a radio station, which when you think about it, is way more f***ed up than any creepypasta. So when making a creepypasta, they aren't typically long reads, even the Ben Drowned one with its tons of videos isn't that long. And Pokemon Black version is like a 5 minute read. But we've entered a video game creepypasta that isn't famous for just being scary, but because it is long as hell. The NES Godzilla creepypasta. 
Chapter 1, Earth and Mars. When I was a little kid, the two things I most loved in life were Godzilla and NES games. So naturally, when Godzilla Monster of Monsters came out, it was like a dream come true. Chapter 2, well, almost. Pathos. To sum it up, Pathos Pathos mostly game was the same around getting through layout, very repetitive, the was dark blue rather levels, than green. Smashing the thing I noticed and jets. Chapter, chapter 3, like three. three. Rocks and Trans. Overall, okay. It was pretty Aside mediocre. from all that, my eye, the length, I didn't care. Aside from when that, got, my eye was drawn to a new game as a present life. question mark. I was really curious as to what it was. Chapter 7. I trade the game. As you can see, the lanky aberration had replaced Gazor a year later. The lanky aberration had replaced Gazor a year later. I am a team of expressions I understood. Chapter 1. Dash was like, it's not the fault of expression. He took a heart angry. If you can't have saved us, we are forever grateful. We'll be together again someday. So, did you get all that? Because what I learned from this story is Godzilla on NES is shit. Up next, we've got a story that made me shit my pants as a kid The Legend of Hero Brian. Rumored to be Minecraft creator Notch's dead brother who never existed, the legend of Herobrine would take the internet by storm back in the day. Looking back on early Minecraft, due to how simple and limited the game was, it gave off the eerie feeling when playing in a single player world, almost as if you were being watched. And maybe you were. If you made a shrine and lit the netherrack, well, Nothing would happen because Herobrine's not real, but now you have something to blame when something stupid happens. Random creeper holes in the ground? Herobrine. No animal spawning? Herobrine. Can't find diamonds? Well, Herobrine mined all that sh**. Mojang has made references to Herobrine on multiple occasions. Most notably, most Minecraft updates would always read Removed Herobrine on the bottom to spook early 2010 kids such as myself. And the last story we'll be talking about. Okay, let's get this over with. So, Polybius was a supposed shoot 'em up puzzle arcade game manufactured by our good friends at Cineslosion. A quick, rough translation, it comes out to Sense Delete and or Sensory Deprivation. And in the world of stories that are dumb and fake, we call that foreshadowing. A very limited supply of Polybius cabinets were sent to Portland, Oregon, because if anyone can handle mind manipulation, it's those soulless fucks in Portland. And periodically, Men in Black would come in and extract data from the game. Are you fucking kidding me? This story is so dumb, so stupid, and the fact that this is the one that people point to and say, Oh, Polybius? No, that, that story's real. Like, n no? There was another version of Polybius made for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo that flashes words at you, but alas, the story of Polybius has always kept its place in the public conscience, even if the story is stupid. Well, that about covers the good, the bad, and the Polybius of video game creepypastas, but stay tuned on January 9th, 2023, where I unveil the evil spirit that lurks inside my unopened copy of Odama.